Good morning. Hi, I'm Kristen Amdahl, and welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 280, and we're here at my studio this morning. I was almost going to tell you the beach. Ha! <laughs> Good morning, Judy. Hi, Lily. Thanks for joining live. If you're here live, please feel welcome to say hello. Let me know what you're crafting on this morning, and if you have any questions for me. I uh, am here in my office this morning for a couple of reasons. First of all, I didn't drive Marlon to tennis this morning, and I did have every intention of going to the beach. But just before I left, I had this urge, good morning, Mar, to stay here and show you some show and tell pieces from the Black Friday sale. Oh, shoot, and I forgot something in the other room. And I have a really special show and tell to show you this morning, too. The very first items I ever crocheted. I did crochet for a month before I knit and this is the very first item I ever finished. So I do want to show that to you. Good morning Grace. Good morning DJ. Hi Judy. Hi Sherry. Thanks for joining me live everybody. In fact, give me one second. I want to run out and grab that bag because it's really important that I show it to you. I know a lot of you are going to love it. So please bear with me for one minute. <laughs> I'm going to run. Ha, you get to see my crazy little getup I have here too. So sorry you had to watch me put that under my shirt, but that's the way you put a microphone on. And uh, I lost the clip a couple months ago, so I attach it with a bobby pin now. I know. I know. <laughs> Not the most professional thing you've ever seen, but it works. <laughs> uh, let's see. So who did I miss? If you're joining me live... Um, Welcome. So glad you could be here. I'm going to do some show and tells this morning of my very first piece that I ever made. And then I'm going to show you some details on some of the things that are for sale in the Black Friday sale. I've got a lot of things for sale there. And so, like the yarn, you've already seen the color so many times. We've done lots of fun show and tells. But I have all of the sample garments and maybe we'll tell a few stories about the pieces. And I also brought um, some of the body products and just some few other things. And in case you all have questions, I brought other things with me as well. So let's see where we go from there. <laughs> so when I was living in Israel and taught myself how to knit and crochet, my mom sent me a little pamphlet uh, from Michael's or Joann's or somewhere like that and picked some random yarn and some random hooks and needles and sent them to me. So I had a pamphlet that was a layette set for knitting and a layette set for crochet and I did not know how to do either. And the first one that I decided to make was the crochet set. And so I made this booty first in thicker yarn and it turned out so big and my analytical brain realized that if I went with a smaller hook and smaller yarn, I could probably make the whole thing smaller. So because it was the right shape, it just wasn't the right size. And so I ended up making, so this would have been, oh, the light's blowing it out. If I come closer, there we go. So you can see that it, not only is it a, booty. I did not know where to insert my hook for single crochet. So some of them are through the back loop. Some of them are through more than two loops. Uh, and then you had to do a spike stitch for the stitch pattern on the instep and on the cuff. And so I didn't know that that was difficult to do. I didn't know that that was an advanced stitch. I just made it. And I find that so incredibly interesting nowadays when um, as a teacher because when I learned I just wanted to make baby stuff for my baby so bad wild horses couldn't have stopped me from learning I was not I was I refused to give up I refused 
to let obstacles like not knowing how to knit or crochet stop me. And so I really try to instill that into my students in the respect that I always tell people, find something that you really, really, really want to make. If you're struggling with learning something new, not everybody likes to learn things, but like when I learned how to play piano, my first piano teacher was having me do chords all the time. And that's great. That is a certain learning style. But I, for me, I stopped taking lessons after three months and started teaching myself by buying songs and just learning how to play the songs. Now, am I the best piano player in the world? No, but I learned the way I wanted to learn and I was really, and I became pretty proficient at it. And since eight years old to now, I still play piano, I still teach myself new songs, and I still make myself very happy. Am I ever going to be a concert pianist? No, but I got what I wanted out of it. And so going back to the crochet, I wasn't, I, was, I had no, I didn't even think that there was such a thing as a crochet designer at that time. It wasn't on my radar at all, but I had no access to teachers, no access to the internet or information. All I had was this little pamphlet and some yarn and some needles and nothing was going to stop me from making baby stuff. So anyway, it took lots of tries, but I had plenty of time on my hands and I did it. So this was the first set of baby booties and then they came with a matching set of little pants. And this is also in that spike stitch stitch pattern, which I had no idea was not the easiest thing to start with. So, you know, it doesn't matter if something is beginner or intermediate. If you have the will to learn something and you can follow directions, there really isn't anything you can do. And this is what I tell people in and out of our industry. If you, as long as you can read directions and follow directions, there is absolutely nothing you can't learn. Period. Full stop. I believe that wholeheartedly. And here's the sweater. <laughs> I should go find a photo of Marlon in this outfit and post it somewhere today. Um, although it's in a box. You know, I've got those giant bins of photos and I've never scrapbooked. I've never put them together and I need to figure out what to do with them. But anyway, this is the first outfit that I made when I had no idea what I was doing. And this is probably one of the few outfits I ever made following a pattern completely. I did not uh, Vera from the pattern. I did not design this myself. This I made completely by following the directions. Now it doesn't mean I followed them perfectly. I didn't know what I was doing, right? <laughs> but how cute is it? I love this so much. I keep it in a special bag. Well, it's not that the bag is special, but I keep it in a bag um, so that I can keep it. I should do something special with it actually. Did you notice the little buttons too? nautical was a theme that i was into when he was a baby and so i found these little sailboat buttons <laughs> and in that bag i keep this rattle that i bought him back then and i've kept it all these years because i really do believe that this would be a fantastic thing to make as a pattern for knitting and crochet and i did design something like this for um, a yarn company many years ago. And I just think I need to do something similar like it because this could be a crochet tube. This could be an I-cord, which is what I did. I forget what book I did that for. It was one of those books where I was one of the various designers in the book. I wasn't the full author. And I did a giant I-cord for the body of this rattle and then put different components on it by picking up and knitting the arms, legs, and the head. It was so easy um, and something that I will definitely do again when we uh, get uh, further along in the Be So Baby yarn uh, projects. Love it. I love that concept because you know what I used to do is I used to put his hand on it so he wore it like a, a bracelet and when he would wear it like a bracelet he'd always have his toy with him and it wouldn't fall down. Isn't that great? <laughs> and I have a photo of him I believe in this outfit with that rattle on his wrist as a bracelet. <laughs> and this is the the onesie that I kept too. I, we were living in Israel at the time and I was very homesick and my mom sent me this newborn onesie that had teddy bears and American flags on it. Oh, so precious to me. 
and he wore it for about a week before uh, he grew out of it. <laughs> That's the other thing. Um, I was thinking when in terms of designing patterns for Be So Baby, I think it's going to be really important to not just focus on the newborn size, even though that's what we all want to make for a, a new mother. But the thing is, I think a lot of us, at least in my experience, a lot of babies only wear that newborn size for like a week or two, and it's really the next sizes that they need gifts for. So I'm really going to try to focus on some of the slightly larger sizes and try to keep a large size range so that people can make gifts for whatever stage a baby's at. Because what if a holiday falls on, you know, a holiday isn't going to fall on three months or six months or nine months. Whenever the baby's born, if you want to make a holiday outfit for them or a special occasion, um, it's going to have to be sized for whatever age the baby is at that time. So I'm trying to keep all of that in mind when designing the patterns, which is why it's going to take a little longer because I'm putting so much thought into all of it. Um, thanks, Lisa. Yeah, I, I saved a few things. I think I have one blanket and I have the one outfit and I don't think I saved much more after that. But gosh, how much can you save, you know? Oh, it's so sad, but it's... I feel like in my generation, we want to hang on to things, but the things we hang on to are not things that you're going to pass down to the next generation. So what do you do with them? Um, I don't know. It's hard to purge, but it doesn't make sense to hold on to everything either. Otherwise, you run out of space. Uh, it's a hard, it's hard. You know what? I don't think they will be treasured for Marlon's baby, though, Edna. That's the thing. Um, I don't think that the yarn has is going to preserve that well. And, um, you know, there's little stains on the booties for some reason from inside the bag. And, you know, I just don't think that the newer generation wants to wear old baby clothes. I think they want all things new. That's the thing that's weird. But um, this will be my, my uh, keepsake for the rest of my life, that's for sure. And it goes in one little bag. So what's wrong with that, right? <laughs> All right. Does anybody have any questions before I move on to something else? Oh, and I have a message this morning. Oh, I wrote it down. Okay, we have a shout out this morning. And uh, yes, a shadow box is something that I do want to do with this D. That is correct. Um, Catherine Russell, one of our members here in the morning, someone that joins us very often, has is visiting her sister, Sharon Myers. I think might get that. Catherine's on vacation, but Sharon Myers is her sister, and she's visiting Catherine while she's on vacation. And while they're together, Sharon Myers is watching the podcast with her sister, Catherine Russell. And she wanted me to give a shout out to her sister, Sharon, and to say hi. Well, welcome. I'm so glad you could join us. Whether you're a crafter or not, we are happy to have you. And uh, I hope you're having an amazing time with your sister. I haven't seen my sister in several years now since she moved away from Florida. And we're trying so hard to get together with our kids, but it's just the, our schedules just aren't uh, meshing together. So hopefully soon I'll be able to see my sister and my niece and nephew along with Marlon. And we would love that because we used to live only two blocks away from each other when uh, they first moved to Florida. And that was awesome. I think Marlon was, he was not even a teenager yet. So her kids were much younger than that. I believe they both started elementary school down here while Marlon was already in elementary. So they spent several years as young kids living two blocks away from each other. And it was so fun. Miss those days. We used to just be able to walk over to each other's houses. But anyway, so glad that Catherine and Sharon get to spend a little sister time together. So that's wonderful. Um, moving on. I wanted to show you that I have some, I've redone some of my body products. Not redone the formulas, but redone the packaging. So um, in the new year, so somewhere in January, February, you'll see the entire line redone in this beautiful new packaging, which is recycled plastic containers instead of the glass, which will be much easier uh, is that going to show up, which will be much easier for shipping, lighter, less expensive, and easier for taking care of at home. So you see there's the face cream inside. So this is the Be So Young face cream, which I love, and I know a lot of you love it too. And here is the Be So Young 
eye serum and just in case you are wondering if you tried the eye serum before I did little squeeze tubes and nobody liked them <laughs> the formula was amazing and I loved slathering out on my eyes and I know a lot of you did too but I needed to find a better container so I found one of these airless pumps like the fancy cosmetic companies use so look at this now because it doesn't have chemical things in it it is going to separate a little bit but that's okay you just have to shake it up like that and then you've got your perfectly mixed eye serum but check this out you take the lid off and it's one of those airless pumps so you won't miss a drop as you pump it and use it it moves up to the top and you'll get every last drop is that fancy or what <laughs> i mean like i feel so fancy with this bottle i couldn't believe it when i found it so right now for the black friday sale i am offering you a set of the eye cream and the eye serum and there's more. <laughs> uh, my organic bar soaps are back in stock. And so you get a free bar of my organic bar soap with the purchase of the eye cream and eye serum combination. So this is a $6 value. You get this for free with the purchase of these two. And I have 12, 11 or 12 cents Oh, I love this one. This is lemongrass. Um, I have 12 cents of the bar soap, so you can um, you can choose whichever scent you like. I have patchouli, lemongrass, peppermint, lavender, citrus lavender, uh, blood orange and bergamot. I have a new thyme. I have a new black tea tree that's really nice. Uh, I have oatmeal spice that smells like Christmas. And I have uh, shea honey oatmeal, which is probably the most neutral of all the scents. Probably a couple more, but that's all that's coming to mind. And they're all organic, they're all natural, and even the scents are only essential oils. They're just lovely. Um, so you get one for free with the purchase of the face cream and eye serum, and that's during uh, Black Friday. So, you know, I started the sale early, but now um, we're going to go through the weekend because why not? As long as supplies last. If I sell out of anything, there won't be rain checks because it is just a sale. But um, yeah, if you feel like trying it or repurchasing it or buying for a gift, it's a pretty good deal. So that's available on the Black Friday sale as well. What else? Well, you know all the yarn that's on the Black Friday sale. The beads went quick. <laughs> in fact, I want to show you what is left. It, and I'm going to guess that it didn't photograph well because it didn't sell like the other two colors. Although I haven't done orders from last night yet. I'm going to start shipping as soon as we're done here this morning. So it's possible they did sell out now and I just don't know. But it was the neutral set of the bead bag, the bead grab bag that didn't sell well. And I got to tell you, they're so pretty <laughs> that I wonder if they didn't photograph well because I actually expected these to sell out before the other ones. So I just wanted to show, a, see I do, these might have sold so I can't guarantee that they're still available. But here's the pink, red and purple set. Here's the blue set and here is the neutral set. Now what I think that these bags are going to be great for is maybe not one project, although I've seen some videos on the internet of people doing like a cowl with assorted beads and just making it super, super beaded. Um, that would be amazing. Um, but also in this bag, you could make a couple of memory wire bracelets. You could make a couple pairs of earrings. You could make, um, what else? You could bead any other sort of yarn bracelet. You could do any of my uh, crystal, uh, any of my chaining necklaces. You could do any sort. You could do barefoot sandals. You could do beading on the hem of something. You could bead a scarf. There are so many different projects you can do in here. Now you could separate out the beads and figure out how many you have of each one for doing matchy matchy things. 
or you could just pick them randomly and do that randomly assorted bead thing, which I think is sometimes really fun. Now, because these sold so well, I am going to consider bringing these back as an item in my shop because I do believe that it is really over intimidating to go into a store and make your own assorted sets of beads. Now, this was because I had leftovers from kits that I no longer sell, but in the future, I am going to seriously consider making some assort, like curating assorted sets because I think it's really fun to have those on hand for when you feel like beating a project. So um, these will, they won't be this size. This is definitely a sale item. These are well below wholesale cost right now. You get over six ounces, um, over three quarters of a cup of beads for $10. That's really, really good. Anyway. So I just wanted to point that out and in case you are, in case maybe the photo didn't do justice to the neutrals, I wanted to point it out that they are just as pretty as the pinks and the blues. So just wanted to say that. Does anybody have any questions before I go further? And also, does anybody want to see any of the sample garments up front and uh, close and personal? Because before I, I won't have time probably to go through all of them. Um, Good morning from Arizona. Hi, Sand. Yeah, Joe says she'd be interested in the kits. Okay, cool. How do you find the Black Friday sale? Faye wants to know. If you go to my website on the shopping page, there's uh, categories at the top, and there is a category for uh, Black Friday sale. And so you can click on that, and it will filter everything that's for Black Friday. Or you can go to my blog, and the most recent blog post also uh, posts a link to it. And when today's show's over, I'll post a link to it in the show notes. If anybody has a computer handy and would like to share that link for her right now, you're more than welcome to. But otherwise, um, it's not too hard to find, I don't think. So you can either go to the shop and filter by Black Friday. You can go to the blog, and it'll tell you exactly how to get there. Or um, wait till after the show's over, and I'll post it in the notes. Um, okay, so I think I saw Sherry say she wants to see the X-Stitch cardigan. I think she just made that one, too. Now the hard part is going to be finding something. Maybe that was a... Hmm. Maybe I'll find... Oh, maybe. Maybe. Somebody was asking me about my earrings this morning. These are my tassel earrings done in Be So Fine Yarn. Make an absolutely wonderful gift. Last minute handmade gift. Uh, I have pattern, video, everything you need on my website to make this. It is so easy to make these. You can make them in assorted colors for a bigger gift. You could make them as a group gift and make everybody different ones. Here is the shrug. This is the X stitch, X, X stitch shrug. <laughs> it's called Jewel of the Shrug, actually. I think it was a play on words of Jewel of the Nile when I wrote it, or when I designed it. Oh, wrote the name, I guess. So you can see it does not have a closure in the front, but it has this beautiful scalloped edge, and, and it has long sleeves. Let's see if I can lift that up a little bit. Now the photos that I shared for each listing are the published photos from the pattern, so you can see a lot of details on them there. This one's done in Be So Sporty. Um, Be So Sporty yarn, 100% organic. Um, 100% bamboo in colorway million dollar red. Beautiful red color. Be great to wear to a holiday party. Let's see, what else do we have? Ah, I put in some projects from books too. Belle needs help with the X stitch. Yeah, you can find videos on it on my website and on my YouTube channel. I've done lots of videos on the X stitch. Uh, yeah, you can find videos on how to do those stitches on my website and on my YouTube channel. Just search either one by X stitch. They're both there. This is one of the shrugs from, oh my goodness, I'm going to sneeze. <sighs> continuous crochet. In continuous crochet, the book, which I don't think I have a copy in here, which bums me out. I think I, I, think I sold the, my copy by mistake one time, you know, during a, you know, 
while selling books sometimes you sell too many and so I never did get my copy back so I do need to get it from my shelf but anyway both of the items that I made out of my yarn for that book it's funny when I was designing that book it was right when um, my yarn company started and I snuck in two projects with my uh, yarn in the book not snuck in but you know what I mean and one of them was this shrug done out, done out of be so fine yarn and colorway crushed berries and it has the most gorgeous bobble shell can you see the raised texture of those bobbles on there and what it does is it actually uses up more yarn than it looks like this takes the full 650 yards to make this shrug and that's because of those bobbled stitches and what it does is it gives a lot of weight to the piece so even though it's just this shoulder topper it actually has a nice weight to it and has a really beautiful drape to it because of that and um, so it'd be great to wear over a dress like this or a tank top or anytime you want to cover your sleeves. And if you look at the shop listing of it, it does show you it modeled on a professional model so you get a better look for it. Now I have another piece from that book in this sale and would you know I'm not going to find it. But I'll show you something else that I don't, a few other pieces that I don't really talk about much. I thought this was a good opportunity to do that. Ah, but this one I really wanted to show you. Dang it. Well, you'll see, it's here, it's here. Um, so I have a herringbone cowl that I designed in Be So Sporty yarn for that book. And it's done in the colorway Pure Gold. And it has this beautiful post-stitch herringbone texture to it. And then little crystallized, they're plastic or resin or something, but they look like crystals and they match the yarn. And so you button the cowl instead of slipping it over your head. And it's so cute. It's here. I know it's here. Oh, you know what's funny? I listed this one wrong. This one I listed as a knit pattern because I thought it was because I used this yarn for two different projects. I used this yarn for a knit pattern in... Um, knitting outside the swatch, but then I designed this sweater in crochet, and it, this is the back. The back has a lace insert and a tie across it with a low V neck or back, and then the front is plain. Then it has side vents and these lace inserts along the shoulder to the sleeve, and it was never published. <laughs> and for some reason, I listed it as that knit sweater it's the same size uh, I better change that though it is super cute Lisa let me put it on the mannequin so you can see you would wear a tank top underneath it obviously well or not if your bra fit in the back you wouldn't need to you went with something nude and you can see that lace insert how pretty that is on the back and then it ties like that and then the front has more of a boat neck. So that's a piece. Let's see, I put it on now. Now the sleeves match. Anyway, so that one's done in uh, Drew and Bor one of Drew and Borsky's yarns. And this was the one that he made with cotton and Tencel, I believe. Hand dyed and a cotton blend and super soft. Um, oh, Melissa shared the link to the sale. Wonderful. Dang it, I wish I could find that other piece though. Anyway, so we'll keep moving on. These are two pieces that I designed for Knit Crate when I did a yarn special for them. This beautiful, colorful scarf with these flower fringes on the end. Aren't those adorable? So this is a uh, wool scarf made out of Be So Brave American Merino wool. And then this is the crochet felted tote I did in the same three colors because in the set you got one ball of each of these three colors so those were the two patterns that coordinated and so those are for sale right now this was a shawl that I designed for interweave crochet magazine several years ago many years ago actually and it was done in one of those self-striping wool yarns I think it was a chunkier yarn 
you know, I could probably re-release the pattern now, but I just never have. Isn't that pretty? It's done in two pieces, and you join them down the center as you go. But anyway, it's a beautiful shawl, and um, it's done. And you could wear it right now, or you could give it as a handmade gift for the holidays. Really nice size. Uh, I know everybody was, I know these were a big hit last year when I designed the knit and crochet squared off ponchos. And now you can buy them if you don't feel like making them. And what I really love about the squared off ponchos is that they are so much more attractive on than ponchos that come to a V in the middle of the front of you or the back of you. When it comes to a, when it has a straight edge instead, I feel like it looks so much more attractive with like skinny jeans or uh, uh, leggings if that it depends on how tall you are and how low the poncho comes but I have both of those listed now so if you loved these ponchos but were intimidated to make them or didn't have time to make them now you could buy them instead or let's say you have someone on your gift list this year who is a poncho lover you could buy either one of those for them as well I brought I have one item in be so sporty bling for sale uh, the member the shrug I made when the yarn first came out in the first sunrise color you can now buy this although it might have any of these items may have sold overnight I have had uh, no time to actually double check so if they have sold I apologize for teasing you but if they have sold here's the here's the caveat you could still make them <laughs> so if you see something that you loved and didn't get on it in time you could always still buy the yarn and make these items most of the items are made in my yarn Edna made that one. Wonderful. Yeah, it's a nice, fun, easy, simple, quick project to make. Let's see, what else do we have in here? Oh, we've got some dresses. These are some dresses that I uh, designed for a different yarn company years ago. They actually made it on a runway at a fashion show before. So pretty. This one is green and it's in wool and you see better, way better pictures in the listing, but so pretty. It's lace weight wool. What's the name of that one? Uh, in the listings, I don't think I gave them names. I believe in the listings, I just said what they were and described what kind of yarn they were for allergy purposes. And then this dress, and I never did, I redesigned this one in Be So Fine yarn and called it um, Fan Dancer. I never did redesign this one yet. It's been on my list of things to do but it is so pretty. The red dress has a low back and you um, corset it up with these chains. Super cute. And you can see photos of both of those on the listings. Oh, I also listed one of the newer Zen scarves. So this is the crochet one, and I listed this one for sale. The knit one I'm keeping, but uh, like I said before, you can't keep everything. You've got to make room for new stuff. So I decided to keep one of them, so I kept the rainbow one, and I decided I'm listing the Zen scarf that's done in crochet in the more pastel -y colors, uh, the Key West crochet shawl. One of the first items I ever made in Be So Fine yarn when I first started making and selling Be So Fine yarn. This shawl is for sale now. I can't believe I'm getting rid of these. But you know what? You gotta make room for new. You do. You really do. Took me a long time to get to this point, but really do. Ah, you might re remember this one. This is a recent one too. The Morgana shawl is for sale. I am going to part ways with this beautiful shawl. These colors make me so happy. This is also done in Be So Fine yarn. So that's 100% bamboo. If anybody, uh, I did make a point to write the fiber content on every project in the sample sale for allergy purposes, but if anybody has any other questions about that, please feel welcome to ask me. I want to make sure everybody orders the right stuff for what works for them. Oh, nothing wrong with owning two of anything, Lisa. You know, when I buy something that works for me, I buy a lot of it, like the fleece-lined leggings. 
I have six pairs of those now. And you know the tank top that I like with the crisscross on it? And I bought it in, <laughs> kind of furry thing got my nose. Uh, you know, I bought it in gray. I went back and bought it in four other colors this week. I now have a blush pink, a wine, a black, and a navy. And you know what? I'm so happy because on days when I don't know what to wear, I know I can throw on one of those tank tops and the matching fleece leggings, throw a jean jacket or a shawl or a vest over it and call it a day. Um, so there's nothing wrong with buying two of something that works for you. When you know what shapes work for you, go for it because it takes the thought process out of it. And when you can remove that thought process, your brain can work on something else. I love having things that are no-brainers in my closet so that my mind can work on something else more creative or something else more important. The Tempesta top is for sale. This is the back and this is the front, but if you prefer it with this in the back and this in the front, it then becomes a boat neck top and it has cold shoulders. This is done in Be So Sporty yarn as well. For all of, and I also listed sizes on everything in the sample sale. So if you're wondering about sizes, you've got all of that, excuse me, listed there too, whether it's for the shrugs, the shawls, the scarves, or the, si or the sweaters and sized garments. I put sizes on all of it. But again, if you have questions, please don't feel shy. Please ask away. You know, if you're, oh, I found the piece I was looking for. Here's that beautiful crochet cowl that I did for continuous crochet. And there are those buttons I wanted to tell you about. And there's that beautiful post stitch herringbone stitch pattern. Is that gorgeous or what? So pretty. And so you could flip this around and make it, you could make it a scarf. You could make it a Mobius by twisting it around, but even just as a straight on cowl. I love this with the buttons. I think it's so pretty. I'm missing quite a few of your comments. I'm sorry. If I miss something important, please feel welcome to repeat it or write it in the recorded comments because you know I read those all day and reply to all of them. I've got a bunch more cowls here, so if you have some people that you have no idea what to buy for them, a cowl is a nice, easy project to give. Here's the Delilah cowl. Well, that's what the pattern's called. This is done in Be So Tender yarn, which is worsted weight organic cotton. Organic cotton is a great um, fiber to use if you're not sure of someone's allergies as well. And then I have both the knit and crochet version of this one. These are both in organic cotton, the organic cotton as well. These are, th oh, where's the knit one? It's here. You wouldn't believe the size of my bin down here. <laughs> I've just got so much stuff, but I want to sell it. I want you guys to share it. I want you to either love and appreciate the handmade items that I've made, or I want you to spread the handmade love onto people that don't knit and crochet. Either way, this is all good. Spreading handmade and spreading handmade love is good. And, um, and it makes room for me to make more pretty things and have more samples for new books. I can't keep everything. So if you guys love and appreciate the work that went into this and you think you can wear it and love it or can give it and someone else can love it, that will make me happy too. Obviously, you know these prices do not justify the time that went into making it. I'm not doing this to make a profit on my time, that's for sure, just to cover the cost of the yarn. That's it because it's time to move on and pass the love on. So here is the Highland Twilight Crochet Vest. This is a pretty one. Fun one to make too, but not everybody wants to make it. What if you appreciate this stuff, but it's something you don't want to make? That's fine too. This has Blue Danube Be So Fine for the vest. And then we've got some Ice Silver Fox and some Pink Damask in there. Uh, this is a pretty one. This one was a fun one to make. This is done in uh, my wool Be So Brave yarn in the gray and the lime green. That's pretty too. Then I've got another shrug. This was, I think, the first piece I made in Be So Sporty yarn. Oh, no, no, this isn't that piece. This is the Marrakesh pullover. This is done in motifs. This one's really pretty. Very pretty. Grace made that one too, wonderful. Oh, this would be a good gift for somebody. 
like a techie person, this, uh, this is a felted laptop or iPad case. And so what you, and I put um, foam sheets inside to make it extra protected. So what you do is you put your item in there, you flip the lid over, and then there's these elastic bands that come around to hold it all in place. So if you know someone that could use something like this to protect their um, laptop or their iPad Pro or something like that, this would be a great item for uh, sale too. Where do I sell? Uh, I sell everything on my website. If you go to kristinamdahl.com, the link is in the video description. You can find everything that I sell. Yep, and if you want to search by Black Friday sale, on that sale page, there's all sorts of categories listed at the top. You just click on Black Friday sale, and it'll filter all the pieces that are on sale for Black Friday. And so I've been asked, how long is the sale going to last? I think I'm going to let it go through... Um, I'll let it go through Cyber Monday. That sounds pretty good, right? Oh, thanks, Melissa. Melissa just shared the link with you. So if you scroll to Melissa's link, she can send you the link to that. Here's the knit version of that cowl I just showed. So here's the crochet version and the knit version. And the reason I wanted to show these to you is that I designed these when Vogue Knitting Magazine named um, this yarn, Be So Tender Yarn, a must-have for fall last year. And I still have the magazine article because that was so exciting. And so in, to celebrate being listed in the magazine, I designed these two pieces in the three colors of yarn that they showed in the article. It was really cute. And these are great. So the knit one is done in slip stitch mosaic, which is one of those more dense fabric so this is really warm and really dense so if someone's going to do a lot of time outside this would be a great gift for them and this one's a little more decorative but still warm that one's done in crochet motifs that are joined as you go this is what also one of the first pieces that i made in be so sporty yarn this is a really simple knit cowl done in crushed berries so pretty and so easy to wear. I mean, if you have a friend that's not too blingy, not too um, flashy, a simple stockinette cowl might be the perfect gift for somebody like that. In any of these gifts, you could add a pot of Rapture, a little travel size bottle of Rapture to make it a combo gift. You could add any of my bags. You could add, um, you could add all sorts of things. What if it's a crafter? You could add a ball of yarn to it, right? There's so many things you could add to a gift like this. You could add a body product. And then I've got some skinny scarves for sale. Hi, Lily. Thanks for joining live. Just showing all the pieces from my Black Friday sale. And there's a lot. And we've gone through so much of this time already. And I don't know if anyone's getting bored. If you all are getting bored, we can stop. <laughs> Here's the first piece I designed in Be So Sporty Yarn. It's the Athena Shrug. And this is a long sleeve shrug. You can see the photos on me in the listing, but it's so cute on. And that's a more of a substantial shrug. It's got the long sleeves and the cuffs on it. Super cute and done in Be So Sporty Crushed Berries yarn, which is a bright, vibrant raspberry. Oh, I think you get the point. We've got a lot of stuff for sale here. Oh, a baby blanket in the organic cotton Be So Tender yarn. This is for sale still. As of last night, it may have sold overnight. I can't be certain. Not boring. Okay, good. <laughs> Here's another skinny scarf for sale done in bamboo. Again, these the little scarves would be great to go along with another type of a gift to make it a combo gift. Oh, here's another beautiful cowl. That's another substantial cowl. So it's done with cable, so it's a little more dense. So great for someone who's going to be spending time outside. That would make a great gift. Here's one of the vests that I made in Be So Tender Organic Cotton. I'm sure a lot of you made this one as well, but if you wanted to give this as a gift, or if you didn't make it and didn't have time to make it but love it, now's your chance to buy it and wear it anyway. Okay, then there were a couple of hats that I did now that I've listed. I believe these are all 
women's sizes. <laughs> I did keep a men's hat just in case Marlon ever decides to wear it. I'm going to keep that one just in case. I want him to want to wear stuff that I make and he's not there yet and that's okay. He'll get there. <laughs> I have a shawlette for sale. This is one of the shawlettes that I did last year in Be So Fine Yarn. Beautiful, delicate flowers along the edge. And then I've got several hats for sale. This is a Tunisian hat. These are all done in Be So Brave American Merino Wool. Got one in the darker green and in the cream rib stitch and blue and white striped, which is almost like a piping because it has that raised edge on it. And then I have this beautiful cowl, oh, one of my favorite cowls I ever made, done in slip stitch mosaic uh, chevron stitch. Years and years ago, I designed a felted bag in this stitch pattern for one of Vogue Knitting's books. I forget which book I did it for, uh, but and I never got that sample back. Do I remember how many balls it took to make the dragonfly shawl? It's over one for sure. I feel like it's one and a half, something like that. Yeah, about one and a half. So it's, you definitely need two balls of Be So Fine yarn to make the dragonfly shawl. Uh, so anyway, so I made that felted bag and it was done in black and white yarn that was felted and it was so gorgeous and I never got the sample back because it was for a different company and I've missed it ever since and so when I first started designing in Be So Brave yarn, one of the first things I wanted to do with a worsted weight yarn was make those stripes and I ended up making it non-felted because I wanted it to be, um, I just wanted it to be a simple cowl. But one day I will do this in a bag again because the contrast of this stitch pattern in felt for a tote bag is really gorgeous too. But um, in the set that I did for, the, for Be So Brave, I did a cowl and a hat. I don't have the hat here with me right now and I might be keeping that one, but this is the cowl. It's so pretty. I love this. I love that stitch pattern. And I have one sample for sale in Be So Wild yarn. This is that really fun yarn that I made several years ago. May bring it back one day, who knows. But it's a combo of different types of novelty yarns, including some mohair, some ribbon, some gauze, and some sequins. And I made this oversized boxy tank top and you can see it on me in the photos, but it's just oversized and something you just sling off your shoulder and wear over a tank top and jeans and just has that beautiful texture. It's made on oversized needles to give you that really loose gauge. And then it has the sequence on it. That's super fun, but it does have some wool in it uh, and some mohair. So, Please keep that in mind for allergies because I know not everybody can wear animal fibers. So keep that in mind when uh, purchasing as a gift for somebody else. I think if you're not sure about somebody's preferences, I would stick with the organic cotton and the bamboo. I think that would be a safer place to do for gifts. But if you're buying for yourself, buy anything you want. <laughs> I think that's the majority of everything that's here. So if anybody has any questions, now would be a great time to ask them. And I'll stop talking so I can look at some questions instead. So I know I miss a bunch when I talk. <sighs> Let's see. Oh, other people are chatting. Oh, so I shouldn't feel so bad. Sometimes I think I'm missing everything when I don't answer, but sometimes it's a side conversations. That makes me feel better <laughs> that I'm not just missing everything. <laughs> they weren't meant for me in the first place. <laughs> oh, Grace, I'm glad that was fun. It was fun for me too. We went super long, but you know what? It would have taken me 20 minutes to drive to the beach 20, 30 minutes at the beach and then 20 minutes back. So for the amount of time it would have taken me to do all that, we got to sit and chat the whole time instead. Uh, yeah, I have patterns for all of these, Dina. You can find all of them as patterns on my website. If you go to the free pattern uh, catalog page, you can search by yarn, you can search by type of project, you can search by type of craft. Now you could just, if that's what you're looking for, search by crochet or search by poncho, but it'll definitely come up. 
Thanks, Thea. I'm glad you had fun. That's wonderful. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Kim. I hope this helps you to make better buying decisions because you know how important it is to me to share details of things. Uh, um, what's the name of the thicker bamboo yarn I sell? That would be Be So Bold. Be So Bold is the worsted weight, and or you mean the Be So Sporty, which is the sport weight. Thanks, Judy. All right, well, we are out of time. So thank you everybody for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed chatting with me and everyone else here. I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing all of the goodies in the Black Friday sale, including my brand new look to my body care line and finding out all of the deals. And I probably didn't even mention everything that's for sale for Black Friday. And we didn't talk about other things that make great gifts, like the Create, Share, Inspire notebooks and the pen set or any of my bags that are for sale. Some of the bags are on sale for Black Friday too. But anyway, go shopping, have fun, know that you're helping a small business like me and know that you are sharing handmade with yourself and with those that you love. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. Oh, tomorrow's Thursday, Black Friday, uh, Thanksgiving. Yes, I will see you Friday. I will not be broadcasting tomorrow. I will be driving to Bradenton to see Marlon tomorrow. So have a wonderful day, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you Friday. <laughs> Bye.